You are welcome to Avers Time. This is God's divine arrangement to turn your life around for good. We encourage you to listen attentively as God's servant, Joseph Okwala, brings to you the message of life from God's throne of grace. Peace be unto you in the name of Jesus Christ. You are welcome to Avers Time. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you. We give you praise. Glory be to your name, Lord. Lord, send your word. Transform our lives. Thank you, Father. Glory be to your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Yeah, I want to speak on the ascension and exaltation of Christ. The ascension and the exaltation of Christ. The ascension and the exaltation of Christ. And let me take you to the account in Acts chapter 1, how Jesus ascended to heaven. Um, after he has given uh, his disciples commission to go and witness to the world from verse 9. And when he had, so Acts chapter 1 verse 9, and when he had spoken these things, why they beheld, he was taken up and a cloud received him out of their sight. And why they looked, steadfastly towards heaven as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, which also said, ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. May the Lord bless the reading and the hearing of his word in our hearts in the name of Jesus Christ. What do we mean by assertion? What is exaltation? Yeah. Assertion is the event after Christ's resurrection in which he departed feasibly from the heart to heaven. From the account I read to you, Jesus Christ ascended to heaven. He departed from this world after his resurrection, after he had appeared to his disciples, after the 40 days of his post appearance to his disciples, relating with his disciples, he now ascended bodily, visibly, from the heart to heaven. Now, what is exhortation? Exhortation is an act of God by which he gave to the risen and ascended Lord full power and glory to sit at his right hand in the heavens. In Acts chapter 2 verse 32 and 33, this Jesus had God raised up, whereof we are all witnesses. Therefore, being by the right hand of God, exalted, and having received of the Father the promise of the Holy Ghost, he had shed forth this, which ye now see. And here, Ephesians chapter 1, verse 20, verses 20 and 21 shows that Jesus Christ is exalted and is now sitting at the right hand of God. Ephesians 1, 20 and 21, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places, far above principality, and power, and might, and dominion, and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. In Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 1, and the verse number 3, please let's read 
I am dealing with the ascension and the exaltation of Christ. Now, Hebrews 1.3 says, Who, being the brightness of his glory, and that is Christ Jesus, and the express image of his person, and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. Philippians chapter 2. Come to Philippians chapter 2. And then verse uh, number 9. Philippians chapter 2. Verse number 9. Wherefore God also had highly exalted him. Exaltation is an act of God by which he gave to the reason and ascended Lord, full power and glory to sit at his right hand in the heavens. Wherefore God also had highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. This is exaltation. And this is ascension and exaltation of Christ. This took place. It was recorded in history. Mark testified about it. In Mark chapter 16, verse 19, Luke testified about it. In Luke 24, verse 51, and in Acts chapter 1, 9 to 11 that I read to you, Stephen testified about it. He said he saw the Lord Jesus Christ on the right hand of the Father. Acts chapter 7, verse 55 to 56, Peter himself testified about his ascension and his occupying sitting at the right hand of the Father. Paul the Apostle too testified about his ascension and his exaltation. So also was John the Beloved in Revelation. He saw the glorified Lord in Revelation chapter 1, verses 1 to uh, 1 to 20, in fact, when he saw the Lord, the Lord, he, he, whom he always reclined on his bosom. When he saw him in his glory, he became dead. Now, what is the necessity for the ascension and exaltation of Christ? Everything that Jesus did has reason. There is a reason why he came in the human body, why he descended. There is a reason why he lived the way he lived among men. There is a reason why he went to the cross. There is a reason why he went to the tomb to be buried. There is a reason why he resurrected. This also, this ascension has a reason. Number one, it is to demonstrate his complete achievement that what he came to do on earth, he had achieved it. Number two, then for the felicitation of human worship. No one can worship the Father in spirit and truth if Jesus never ascended because for his ascension, he paved way for us. Then number three, for the bestowment of the Holy Spirit. If he did not ascend, the Holy Spirit will not be released. But he ascended. And the Holy Spirit was poured upon us. Then for the constitution of his airship over the church, he cannot become the head of the church if he did not ascend. Now, the nature of his ascension and exhortation, one, it was bodily and visible. His disciples were there. They saw him. They saw him ascended. And it was with the heavenly body that passed through the heavens. Aha, he could ascend. It, it, it is not the body that came, that went to the graveyard, that came. He came out supernatural, with a supernatural body. When he was born from, uh, born through uh, the virgin. Now, that body he took to the cross, that body he took to the grave. By the time he resurrected, he, he resurrected in a supernatural body, yet he retained his form. 
Now, he ascended. No human being can ascend to heaven if not that Jesus Christ, he had resurrected. He has resurrected, returned to who he is as God. Then he stand above all the heavens. He sat at the right hand of God, visibly now in heaven. Colossians chapter 3 verse 1 tells us that if ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ seated on the right hand of God. Jesus is the one occupying the right hand of God. The Bible called the right hand of majesty. The seated there of God's power and God's glory. Now, let me quickly tell you the result of this. Yeah, what does this brought to us? Number one, it gives us freedom and confidence to enter into the presence of God. Because Jesus ascended, we have, and when I say we, I'm talking of those of us who have believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, who have received the Lord Jesus Christ. You can also join us. You can be part of the beneficiary of the redemption that Jesus Christ did for us. It is simply by repenting from your sin, acknowledging the fact that you are a sinner and you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and you invite him to live in your heart. That you believe that he died, he, he resurrected, and he ascended to heaven. You will have freedom and confidence to go to the Father. Then it assures us of our hope of immortality. Yeah, it, 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 it assured us of our hope of immortality. If we die now, we are sure that we also have another body that Baba will give to us. That we're able to also ascend to heaven. And that we will no longer die. Jesus told John, he said, I am he that died and I will never die again. Forever we never die. So if you can come to Jesus Christ, you enter into having the hope of immortality. And number three, it assures us that all things must be working together for our own goodness. Romans 8.20 says, all things work together for those who are called according to his purpose and to those who to them who are called according to his purpose and to those who love God. All things work together for our good. Then it made Christ head over all things for the church. Then make it his, his ascension and exhortation. Make it possible for him to bestow spiritual gifts. Many of us and all of us that we are born again, we have spiritual gifts. We have spiritual endowment. And they are buried. Various spiritual gifts, various operation of the spirit, various ministration of the spirit, just on the account that Jesus Christ ascended and is exalted. Then it enables us. It enables us for the service. Jesus said in John 14, 12, said those who believe in me, said the work that I do, same they will do. He even said, we will even do more than that. In Acts chapter 10, verse 38, Jesus Christ was anointed with the Holy Ghost and power. And that was why he could go all about doing good. And we also, we have that hope and we have that, that enablement to do what Jesus did. Finally, Jesus Christ, the result of his ascension and exhortation that he might give us our heavenly position. Do you want to have a home with Jesus after death, my brother? Do you want to have a home with Jesus after this life? Do you want to live with Jesus Christ in the, in the heaven that he has gone to prepare for us? Please, one thing you need to do is to repent from your sin and believe the Lord Jesus Christ. And you believe in your heart and you confess with your mouth that Jesus is the Lord. You shall be saved. Please do that now. Lord Jesus, I know now that you are the Lord. You are the Savior of my soul. Come 
into my heart. I receive you today by faith. And Lord, make yourself real in my life. And after this life, let me live with you in eternal, blissful heaven. Thank you because you have done it. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. We believe you have been blessed by the word of God you just heard. For further help or counsel, call these numbers 0806-615-6208 or 0703-284-4129. Join us on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube at Strago Media for more spiritual messages. Or visit our website at www.stragomedia.com to download those messages for free. Thank you for staying to the end of this program. Join us again, same station, same time next week. God bless you. Amen.